Every day, journalists are on the front line, risking their lives to report the news. Many media organizations provide hostile environment training, but there is no way for journalists to experience a conflict zone without the real risks. Senior lecturer in international journalism at the University of Technology, Sydney, Tony Minatti, thinks he has a solution. Tony has been the driving force behind Warco, a video game in development to train journalists in war zones. Basically you go into the war zone, uh, the game enables you to look around anywhere in, in that environment. Uh, if you see something you want to film, uh, you bring the camera up to your eye, you're seeing it through the lens, and then if you want to record, you press record, you see the flashing red light, you can pan, zoom, go in close, go wide. Uh, whatever you're recording is saved in the computer and you uh, proceed with the game. When you've got some uh, spare time, you bring up what you've uh, recorded and you cut, up, you cut your own news piece. Tony has witnessed the horrors of war firsthand, having been caught in the gunfire at Balibo in 1975. And he's lending his experiences to the game's scenarios. You've got two basic, fundamental, and almost contradictory things going on in, in a war zone. You've got to get the story, and you've got to get out alive. There's no point in getting the story and getting killed. We don't want you to get killed, but also there's no, there's no uh, result journalistically. So, on the other hand, to go into a war zone and, and, and not take any risks results in almost no story. So there's that balance you're trying to find. That. And in the game, uh, you'll, you'll be assessed on the degree to which you make sensible decisions and take sensible risks, and the degree to which you do foolish and, and rather stupid and foolhardy things. And you can balance out those two. It's now midwinter in Afghanistan, and this is... You Veteran ABC foreign correspondent Mark Corcoran says for Warco to be taken seriously, it needs to address the complex nature of reporting from a hotspot. I think it does have a lot of potential in terms of a training module. Um, you would have to increase the complexity of, of this, you would have to load in other, other elements, other components, and to try and get a sense of the decision making process, the pressure that you're under both in terms of time and what you need to do and weighing up the risks and all these other factors. And I think, you know, in that, on that level, it, it, could be, um, it could be quite useful. Mark has had more than 27 years experience in the field in over 40 countries. And he is alarmed that many journalists are underprepared, particularly freelancers. You do see increasing numbers of young, younger freelancers out there uh, in these places. You know, they've got their freshly minted journalism degree, their VJs, they've got their camera, they're, they're, they're ready to go. And, um, you know, it's so easy to move around these days, around the world, it's so cheap. Airfare has become relatively much cheaper. And you do see increasing numbers of, of younger VJs out there who obviously have very little, if any, understanding of the environment they're in, hoping to get lucky, hoping to get that big break of being in the right place at the right time and without any funding, without any resources, without any backup. And um, that is a worry. Since the Balkan Wars of the 90s, many news organisations, such as Fairfax, now have formal hostile environment training courses. But there's only so much they can prepare a correspondent. There's nothing like being on the ground to realise that you just know a little bit. Um, but it's, it's a starting point, and it's an important starting point. Um, a friend of mine um, who's just come back from Afghanistan, photographer, she'll say that the medical training means that when you see something unfolding before you in terms of a, a medical situation, you don't panic as much because you've got some points of reference to start with. And you've also got a, a pretty um, comprehensive um, travelling medical kit. Tony Minatti can see his game being used as an individual training module for the next generation of war correspondents. It's an accessible, if you like, uh, entry level game. It's not designed obviously for top flight war correspondents, they know most of this stuff. It's really a way of introducing people to the idea of war reporting and, and the complications and the risks. At sunset, the rebels struck. 
at least 50 heavily armed with automatic weapons and RPGs. There's very little formal training inside institutions, education institutions like my own. Um, I'd like to see a situation where every media course in Australia, every journalism course, communications course, has a, uh, almost a mandatory module of safety training in it. It could only be two or three weeks, but it would be enough to sort of mark out the key areas that people have to be aware of and, and point them in the right direction to where they can get uh, help, get some training.